Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Two Dudes in a Couch, where we wade through the crap on Netflix Instant to bring you weekly horror film reviews of the hidden horror gems that you may have missed. I'm Travis. And I'm Brian. And today, we have two amazing films for you. The Human Centipede, the first sequence, and Human Centipede 2, the full sequence. <laughs> so with that said, why don't we go ahead and check out this trailer. Alright, let's do it. Yes, um, I was wondering if I could get driving directions to a... Once a renowned surgeon known for his work in separating conjoined twins, Dr. Hyder has since retired and went off the deep end. He believes it's time to stop taking things apart and focus on putting things together. exactly where we were going. What was that? Unfortunately for the trio in his basement, that means being mutilated for the sake of becoming his pet human centipede. What is this? What are you doing to us? There we go. Man, well that looks absolutely disturbing. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at part two. <laughs> Human Centipede 2 Full Sequence tells the story of Martin, a mentally disturbed loner who's living with his troubled mother and working as a parking garage attendant. What does that mean? So to escape the life he feels trapped in, Martin has become obsessed with the cult horror film, The Human Centipede. He admires Dr. Hyder's work so much, he decides it's time to see if this experiment has real-world applications. Well, man, I'm stoked. Let's do this. All right, folks, we're going to watch both films back to back. So, Brian, why don't you get the snacks? Oh, snacks? Dude, do you see those trailers? There's no way I'm eating anything through this movie. Oh, uh, well, okay, well, how about the drinks? All right, I can do that. All right, and I'll start the show. This isn't right, man. Oh, what you do? Oh, oh. oh. And we're back. Man, that was that was different. Travis, what do you think about the human centipede the first sequence, buddy? Well, Brian, I know we played up the whole gags thing for this, but the truth is, is I really enjoyed both of these films. Was it disturbing? <laughs> yeah. Was it gross? Totally! Did it make me feel uncomfortable at times? Mm hmm But if you look past the gross-out plot that's on display, there are several credible attributes that make this film worthy of a view. So, Brian, what did you think? Alright, Travis, I liked it. Pundits often say that the horror genre never gives anything new, that they kind of repeat the same thing over and over again. We disagree. But when films like The Human Centipede come along, Man, it's a nice change of pace. Is this film for everyone? No, not at all. Hide your kids, hide your wife. But if you love horror and gross out films, you're probably gonna like this. So Travis, what'd you think of the Human Centipede 2 full sequence? I gotta say, I was really surprised by the second film. When I originally heard that he was gonna make another Human Centipede film, I thought it would go in the same vein as Hostel 2, which was horrible. But fortunately, I was wrong, and Tom Six came up with an excellent, disgusting, disturbing, socially relevant way of continuing his story. What did you think about it, Brian? And this movie was disturbing, in true sequel fashion. Tom Six really amped up the horror, but did so in an interesting way that adds value to this film. I'm telling you, unless you have heard details about this film prior to watching it, I bet you would never have guessed the direction that he would take when setting this film up. All right, let's break down these films. So the storyline in the first film was crazy, but pretty straightforward, and it really didn't offer anything cutting edge. It had a mad scientist, or in this case, a doctor, a crazy experiment, and people in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
However, what made this film stand out is the idea that Dr. Hyder spent his life spent his life separating conjoined twins, but in his darkest dreams, he really wanted to take two, or in this case, three, and put them together. The storyline in part two completely flips the script. I don't know if Tom Six is a madman or a genius. I'm guessing both. It still had a deranged man in it, but this time he was obsessed with the film and wanted to reenact it. Now this isn't groundbreaking territory because Dirty Harry did it in the flick Deadpool several years ago. But this film had a much different feel. This movie was really, really disturbing, but all I could think about was how smart of an idea it was in this day and age to acknowledge the first film as pure fiction. I love that this film had the whole life imitating art thing going for it. Tom Six is a brave man for making this film when so many tragedies have been linked to horror movies, violent video games, and heavy metal music. And to those who argue these things are to blame for real crime, I offer you this. In the first film, it didn't take long for the action to start creeping up, so we didn't get a chance to really understand who the characters were. All we know is that we have two girls here who end up knocking on the wrong door when their car breaks down in the middle of Europe. Well, I get a good feel for how crazy Dr. Hyder really is. I think they could have done a better job at developing his character to get a better sense of who he was. This is where I think flashback sequences could really have made the story just that much better. Part 2 does a much better job in terms of character development. Tom Six does a fantastic job of really developing the completely creepy story of Martin. We see that he's a loner and never experienced friendship. He has some serious mommy issues, hates his job, and people in general. When it comes to his victims, it's a different story because Martin does everything in a very short period of time. So it's full blown chaos when that sequence actually starts. Considering these are the first two films from Tom Six, it's easy to see that he has command of the set. The first film benefited from an amazing location at a beautiful villa in the middle of nowhere. The filming was smooth with a great mix of shots that added to the level of horror. In part two, Tom originally shot the film in color, but during editing decided that doing it in black and white made it much creepier. And we totally agree because it added a whole nother layer to the eeriness that was in this film. All right, the audio was well done in both films. However, I think part two would have benefited from Martin actually listening to some death metal. It could have played up that whole life imitating art part and also would have made a pretty sweet soundtrack. In part two, the acting was all about fantastic Lawrence Harvey, who played the mentally disturbed Martin. He did a great job. There were scenes in this film that actually made me want to look away, and they were all portrayed by Martin. The surgery scenes were very well done in the first film, and the stitches on the victims, and everything looked fantastic. You really got a sense that they actually were attached to each other. In part two, Martin isn't a surgeon, so there isn't a laboratory, no scalpels, no medical instruments, and most importantly, no anesthesia. The violence was brutal and bloody. Viewer discretion truly is advised. If you're squeamish, this probably isn't the right movie for you. As with pretty much any film, there are obviously some weaknesses all around. In the first film, when the girls got a flat tire and then almost immediately got harassed by some pervert in a car driving by, they decided right afterwards to just, we'll just go take a walk and see where we go. And then they end up in the middle of the woods. And the next thing you know, it's pouring down rain and they're knocking on the doctor's door. Just didn't quite make that much sense to me. Then when Dr. Hyder opens the door and he sees the two rain-soaked girls and they tell him that they just broke down, his first question to them was, Are you alone? Really? I think I probably would have hauled butt out of there the second somebody asked me that. But no, these girls, in typical horror fashion, decides to go on into his place, and then they ask him to use the phone. But he tells them that he'll make the phone call for them. Now the problem with this is that they didn't even give him the phone number. They didn't tell him which service they were using. No contact information. He didn't even know their names, and yet they took him at face value that he picked up the phone and called from another room. And in this day and age, who really accepts drinks from a complete stranger when you don't see them being made? That was just weak. I think Tom Six could have done that much, much better. 
And probably the weakest point in that movie for me was when Lindsay actually decides to try to get loose. I mean, she had all these multiple opportunities earlier when the doctor wasn't around, but then decides, hey, he's right next to me. Let's go ahead and try to get out of here. Just was silly. So Brian, did you have any weaknesses for Human Centipede Part 2? Yeah, actually there was just two of them that I can really think of, and one was actually the ending of the movie, but <laughs> there's no spoiler alerts here, so you just gotta have to check <laughs> that out. And the second part was actually, uh, during the second film, Martin acts as an agent and calls the original lady in the first movie, uh, was her Miss Yenny, I think it was? Mm -hmm. um, anyhow, calls her and sets up an, uh, basically an interview to get her to come down to where he had the hostages. And it was kind of funny to me that her agent wouldn't even check to see if Martin was a true agent or not. It just sends her agent down, and next thing you know it, she's a part of the human city beat part two. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty weak, Brian, because, let's face it, the whole movie, he was described as being, well, not very smart. Let's right. just say it that way. Mm -hmm. But yet, he was smart enough to trick a Hollywood girl. All right, guys, so I guess all that's left is the rating. That's right. So, for this time around, we're actually going to rate these two films together. In that case, Two Dudes in the Couch is proud to give The Human Centipede 1 and 2 a... Kill rating. So if you're in the mood for a crazy doctor, stupid girl, feel worse for the doggies and humans, really dumb cops, a funny Asian guy, and the word butt face takes on a whole new meaning, you need to go watch Human Centipede 1 now. And after that, if you're still wanting more of a teeth bashing, needle poking, puke inducing film where butt face still doesn't mean what it used to, then go watch The Human Centipede 2 now on Netflix Instant. Good. Alright. I think I can cut that pretty easily. And when you're done, head over to Kojo Films. Okay, cool. Good. And when you're done, head over to Kojo Films on Facebook and give us your thoughts on the Human Centipede 1 and 2. Did you find it disturbing? Did you find this review disturbing? Let us know. We just wanted to real quickly give a shout out to all the sponsors and partners who are helping us reach as many people as possible. These guys and gals are dedicated to the horror genre. And honestly, they need your support too. They include... For their hard work and dedication, two dudes on the couch give our coveted <laughs> five kill rating. To find links to all of their pages, check out the about section under this video on YouTube. Check them out, give them a like, and tell them that two dudes sent you. So, Travis, I think that's it, man. Oh no, no. What? What? Oh, you're right. There's one last thing. So until then, stay, stay bloody. bloody.